Hello, welcome to my video series, The Heroine's Journey. I'm Susanna Liller, and it's time to find your happiness. We are walking the journey hand in hand with three real life heroines. You've met them, Pamela, Maureen, and Lisa. And we're getting them to recount their stories using the milestones of the journey. And I've invited you to think about your own life and a time when you left ordinary life and responded to a call. And I really want you to think about it because I want you to recognize, realize that you are heroin too, that you have been on this journey. And it takes courage. As Maureen told us in the last video, it takes courage to go on the journey and that courage is earned because there's so many trials and errors that we encounter wrong ways dead ends that we have to deal with on the journey and we also meet allies and friends and fairy godmothers angels people that help us and we meet people that don't help us who have lessons to teach us things that we need to learn because we enter into a relationship that isn't in our best interest or doesn't work out and okay we learn from them and then and that's what this particular step is about we meet dragons so dragons you know what a dragon is in in movies and in books but dragons in a real life heroine's journey are deep-seated beliefs or fears or something that comes up and not every journey will bring up a dragon but those that are substantive and really go deep will bring up something that a heroine needs to look at and to confront and that happens to each of our heroines and you'll hear their stories about it but i'll tell you that Pamela talks about judgment and the judgment that she felt from her mother and the judgment she had from for her mother and also her experience of sort of an identity crisis, not knowing who she was after she left behind the things that were telling her who she was. And Maureen she talks about her encounter with her dragons and this is such a common one the dragon that always says yeah but and what if and who do you think you are of course i would say all the heroines in our story in these videos it's the who do you think you are dragon appears as with just about every woman I have ever coached, including myself, the who do you think you are dragon. And, um, and then Lisa, Lisa talks about shame. And boy, isn't that a dragon that appears frequently in our life stories. So these are more deep rooted feelings that we have that we have to look at. And a lot of people will run away from these feelings and heroines who want to really grow and evolve, they take a good look at their dragon. And also, this is, I think, a way that we distinguish the hero's journey from the heroine's journey. You'll often hear about heroes slaying their dragons. Well, every heroine that I've met who've, who has honored me by telling me their story talks about understanding their dragon really getting to the root of what's going on and help me understand and what do i need to know and how do i need to change because i understand you better so we'll talk about the dragons in this particular video thank you for being with us for being with us for and we'll see you at the next video time for us to have a real growth period is you can meet what I call symbolically a dragon on that road 
and so a dragon would be life's experiences bringing up something for you to transform to heal one of my journeys i had started a partnership with a woman we started our own company going along and things kind of fizzled out and lo and behold she said she didn't want to be my partner i had left 12 years being in a company to go with her to start this business never thinking i would be on my own like hansel and gretel being left in the forest i was desolate and basically because i didn't think i could do it by myself so it was the a big dragon but it was a big gift because i had to pull myself together and do it and then i showed myself i could do it and i could survive it and do well and i could do it by myself but i had gotten that message early on because i had dear protective parents that you know you need somebody and you need help and you can't do it by yourself so that was a dragon for me i'm wondering pamela your dragon oh there wasn't just one <laughs> <laughs> when i left the church and i was 34 years old and i had spent my life being told who i was and what i believed at 34 as a single mother of 3 i was a metaphorical skeleton i had no idea who i was what i believed so i'm you know i'm out here parenting these three children and and i embarked on this this journey of self discovery because i i really felt that that part of why i was so shaken was that i felt like i had been raised as a lie everything i had told was true was true had been told was true i came to discover was false and so i committed to speaking the truth telling the truth knowing the truth and that really did launch me on this journey and part of what was so powerful for me was writing my book Yeah. And and getting my story out there knowing that I was inviting the world to go through my underwear drawer. <laughs> and and they would like some of them and others they would see you know they would be in tatters and I I really made an effort to present things honestly. So there are times that I don't come across all that great. <laughs> um but it was important to me to be honest and yeah. to tell the truth. And that that was that was a, definitely a dragon that I had to conquer this dragon that said why should anybody read what you have to write who's going to listen to what you have to say why do you think you're so important in fact I was at a party with a friend one time and she was telling this guy oh this is my friend Pamela and she wrote a book oh what's your book about well it's a memoir <laughs> you're not old enough to have written a memoir what has happened to you that's so interesting So I'm like thank you dragon it truly so that was just like this ever present little he was this physical manifestation of what I already believed yeah. and right. the continuation of everybody else knows better what's right for you and here you are making your way with I know what's right for me Exactly. I know it's right for me and I'm putting it out there and I'd like to thank the four people that have read it I think three of them are here. <laughs> But it was it was powerful. It was really powerful to just cuz I you know some of the reviews were kind and some of them weren't. <clears throat> and so, and I would read what someone said that wasn't flattering and and really try to bounce it off and go is there any truth in what they're saying? Yeah. And sometimes there was. And and it was really powerful to be able to look at it and to be able to hear it and know that it didn't really mean anything about me. Yeah, right. or not make it mean anything about me. So then Maureen, dragons on your road as you were traversing it. Wow. Um I think there was there's there was and there continue to be lots of dragons and just having having the tools and understandings of how to not slay them but to be with them is how I learned as I was doing my uh you know kind of a long story but 
really kind of acting and, and reflecting and adjusting um, with my intention to be healthy and well and to learn and to integrate, I was getting stronger and stronger and healthier and healthier and always continuing to work with what it is I had to work with. And I got to a level 12 years into my diagnosis where I was able to compete in triathlons and then went, wow, could I possibly race my bicycle again? And I have quite a bit of nerve damage in my spine, which is spinal cord injury, you would call it. So it's like, uh, what, like, you want to race your bicycle again? So, you know, the internal dialogue was, who do you think you are? And there was even outside people saying, you can't do that, or, you know, are assuming I had healed myself. I hadn't healed myself. Nobody with MS is competing, you know, can do what you do. And, and, and so I had to keep listening to myself and the fears that I would get because I would get a lot of the, what I call the yeah, buts, what if, and if onlys. I would do that if. You know, I didn't have nerve damage that affects my legs. I would, if only I cured MS. It's like, I do that, but, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be successful. That would be embarrassing. And so I learned through the years to take these fears and not have them stop me. To just say, okay, like Pamela said, what's the truth here? And say, well, okay, is that true or not? And how do I manage this? I didn't know if I was going to be able to do it. And so, um, and it was, it was really scary, the idea of doing that, but I knew I had this in my heart to do it. And I went, do you want to try? I'm like, yes. So for me, it was looking and really digging deep and being with the fear instead of pushing it down or trying to slay it. Like if I kill you, dragon, you won't dominate me. But if I befriend you, we can work together because there is a fine line. I mean, sometimes embarrassment, we don't want to hurt, hurt ourselves, but we can't confuse being embarrassed and caring about what other people think with the fear of harm, bodily harm. So I was dancing with both of them because I didn't want to hurt myself being out there competitive with MS. It's like, well, is it safe? So I talked to my doctor. I didn't just listen. I talked to my doctor and they're like, oh, <laughs> nobody else is. So I was doing some trailblazing. But in order to do that, I had to listen to my fears because sometimes they're, they're there to just keep you safe and sometimes they're there to educate you. That was really important to look at like things, the fears that come up with um, bodily harm or the fears that come up with um, embarrassment and, you know, even your tribe and belonging like I'm just going to go over here to my support group and they'll understand why I can't do this anymore or you know whatever I'm not making fun of the support groups but that could have made it kept me in a comfort zone so that's that's how I've learned to work with my dragons then and now we do still have them don't we we do to the extent because in the hero's journey how you illustrate so well in your book and how Lisa and Pamela speak to it it's, it's not about they're not there, but having the skills that you share and how to work with them in order to move forward. And as women, I think we are, I went on to, in graduate school, I studied uh, neuro, the neuroscience, and we are hardwired a little differently than men. Mm-hmm. So work with our wiring, <laughs> how our brains are wired. We do nurture, so come here, little dragon, let's talk. You know, it's, it's how we work. <laughs> It's part of the journey. I mean, it's going to happen, and you want that stuff to come up so you can deal with it mm-hmm. instead of being inside of you causing problems. You know, let it come up so I can see it and shine light on it. And have the skills to work with. And as Pamela said, it's always worth it. Always worth it because you've got to keep your eye on the prize that's on the other side. <laughs> would you want to go back to where you were, where you were maybe safe, and you know you would never want to go back. I know it. So, so Lisa, tell us dragon story. I think that when I made that leap, I was really going to just put all of that behind me. <laughs> I was just going to um, be an adventurer, do things that I loved, and you know. I was really at that time that was 2010 it was like the social media was just really starting to take off so I got you know really into images of what life was going to look like um, on the internet and I went and lived this life of images images and it led me 
to literally creating something from nothing artistically versus something that was written by a master. And that brought up this fear of if I expose myself, not just doing pretty, polite art, but the stuff that was coming up um, that I wanted to say, mostly about cultural things, shame, the shame associated with having disappointed people was actually something that has had been under kind of pushed down until the last two years. I didn't have a way to even know we're there because I grew up without a mirror of my own culture. I grew up in the Midwest as the only minority of any kind at that time. I wasn't aware of that whole part of my identity pulling at me with every decision that I was making and every um, attempt to tell my story. So actually, I think, I think shame is the big dragon and it's remained hidden. I could you know, live so much on the surface and create images that were very palatable for other people to consume, but it wasn't, you know, I wasn't tapping into my depth to connect with people. And that's just happened recently. But I'm learning to um, get support in smaller groups, not just blasting things out on the internet. I think a big dragon was having to rush and get somewhere really quickly because that's how I had been right. you know, talking to myself up until then. Right. And that's what success has always been for you yeah. is do it. And yeah. So um, you can see why the heroine's journey is often called the journey to authenticity, right? Mm-hmm. With all these dragons and dealing with them and dealing with the fear you gain back, I think, a little bit more of yourself and have the freedom to, you know, freedom is really a big thing, not to have to live within the constraints of what other people are telling you, the church, the, you know, the, the racing community saying you can't race or whatever. And often that dragon, I think too, you know, is just trying to protect you. I want to keep you safe, you know, sitting on us, yeah, I don't know. It's We could talk a lot about this, but I need to take you now to the heroine goes through all that one step at a time in front of the next one, meets the dragons, deals with the dragons, comes out on the other side, and in the journey, we call it the return threshold, and collects gifts from those particular journeys.